last but not least, let's welcome our founder and chairman of Atomy, Hangul Park, who will share with us his vision and secrets to a successful and balanced life. Uh, the beginning of our company was very humble. There were only 17 attendees at our first seminar. In fact, I believe that it took nearly a year for us to get a couple hundred participants. In the beginning, things happened very slowly. Even after two or three months, we only had about 21 to 23 people. Today, we see a daily increase of two to three thousands. The secret of our success is very simple. At least it is in theory. Here's how I view it. Uh, Atomy is a distributor. It's that simple. Distribution is the selling of great products at low prices. I had this idea that we should source the highest possible quality goods and sell them at incredible prices. The very best quality possible. I believed we should sell products of only the highest possible quality. However, our prices had to be the lowest possible in the market. And not simply less expensive than others. We put tags on them bearing unbeatable prices. And we called these absolute quality and absolute price products. That was our formula from the very beginning. Uh, I was sure that it would work like a charm. We are a network marketing company, or the so-called MLM business. Here's how it works. You enjoy a daily necessity which happens to be of great quality and low price. So you recommend it to someone else. The company then pays you. No harm is done to anyone, right? You have to buy it anyway. And this particular item is helpful and inexpensive, so naturally you keep using it and recommending it to others. They enjoy the quality of it and begin buying it regularly. The referred party recommends it to another person, then to another, and so on, to create a huge consumer group. Thus, you are paid compensation for referrals, which can potentially be surprisingly high. What do we require of the products we sell? The merchandise must be good, low-priced, and a daily necessity. Atomy is destined to be successful. It is assured. All of you here uh, are taking your first steps on a journey of believing in the universally true common beliefs. Atomy is an organization that is fully furnished uh, with a system that will enable you to reach that success. Nothing like our system even exists in other competitors' companies. Traditional MLMs don't hold seminars like this. Their contractors hold them by paying for them out of their own compensation. In our case, the company provides all the necessary equipment and gadgets so that our contractors are not forced to spend big chunks of their own hard-earned income. We really don't want our members to have to spend all their income on holding a seminar. In a nutshell, Atomy is the kind of organization that is equipped with a system that other MLMs can't even dream of. You have finally met a company that has produced many successful people and will make even bigger success. This encounter alone doesn't guarantee your success though. The last leg of success depends uh, on each member's effort and performance. Of course, many people want to succeed, but will more people succeed or fail? Yeah, here's some interesting information for you. From birth to 30, we spend our lives studying. Between 30 and 60, we spend most of our time working. 
okay? From 60 to 90, we live out the rest of our lives in retirement. Nowadays, rumor has it that we might even live up to 100 or even 120 years of age. If that's the case, after 30 years of studying and 30 years of working, where will you be at the age of 60 when you have 60 more years to live? Where should you be at the midpoint of your life? 60 is usually the age when people retire and stop working. According to the data, only 1% of people were successful. That is, they were rich. 4% were able to become financially independent. Fifteen percent passed away early. They died before turning 60. Ten percent were still working paycheck to paycheck. The remaining 70 percent had no money, no savings, and no employment to support themselves. Where do you belong? You should belong to this 1%. Why? You spent 30 years of your life preparing and another 30 years working very hard from the early hours of the morning. You should either be rich or somewhat financially independent. Even if you aren't wealthy, you shouldn't have to ask for help. However, most people aren't going to be like that. The reality is that 95% of people are destined to fail. When you're older, something follows you like a shadow. What is it? Sickness. If you become sick, you can't work. You also have no income. Unless someone else cares for you, your quality of life will be very low. So what are you going to do if you are old, poor, and sick? How you're going to prepare when you get older is crucial. If you don't have a concrete plan when you get older, the later 30 or even 60 years of your life can become a living nightmare. That is one of the two issues that must be taken care of. I wonder why we see such a small number of success cases. Another person who wondered about this was Andrew Carnegie. Carnegie was born very poor, uh, but became enormously successful. You've heard of the Carnegie Foundation, right? Upon looking back at his life, he gave a lot of serious thought as to whether he would have been able to become so successful if he were to have been born poor again. His conclusion was that, yes, he would have become very successful if he were to be born again no matter how many times he were to be thrown into that situation, the outcome would have been the same. It was clear to him. However, most people weren't successful. He strained to figure out what made him different from them. He realized that he had known the secret to something called the law of success. Since he knew the law of success, he was always succeeding in whatever enterprise he took on. However, Others didn't and couldn't. He wanted to write down the laws of success, explaining why he succeeded while others didn't. So he spent the later part of his life enlightening people about success. The law of success is predetermined, like the laws of nature. An American author, Stephen Covey, called these types of laws the true north principle. It stated that north is predetermined as well. So raise your finger, please. Point to where you think north is. Some people pointed this way, others pointed that way. I, I really don't know myself. <laughs> what do we need to find the truth? We need a compass. A compass will show us exactly where north is. Let's say we decide where north is by majority decision. Our decision won't make it north. Just like how north is predetermined, the law of success is already set. And if you follow that law, you will succeed. And if you don't follow it, 
you will fail. Some people call it the law of farming. Some people call it the law of farming. Farmers grow crops according to the laws of nature without fail. You must plant rice in the spring and harvest it in the fall. You are absolutely guaranteed to fail if you try to plant rice in the fall and reap it in the winter. That's why there are principles in farming. What must a farmer do before anything else? Some people might say he should prepare seeds. Some say he should survey the land. Others say he needs to secure a loan and hire workers to work on the rice paddies. Others think he needs to prepare farming equipment. However, the very first thing the farmer should decide is how much of what he is going to harvest. Harvest season is in the fall, right? When farmers begin preparing, they decide what they want to harvest first. The end is decided at the beginning. Let's say a farmer has a plot of land and wants to plant peanuts. Should he plant it in a wet paddy? Of course he shouldn't. That's why you need to first decide what you want as your final goal. If your goal is two tons of peanuts, you must get a sandy field near a river. That decision dictates the tools, the process, the methods, and every other decision. This is why you have to first plan the end result in your head, just like the farmer plans his crops. Next comes planting seeds, maintaining the field, and other related decisions. Now, it's your turn to think about what you plan to reap in the field of your life. What kind of you would you like to see? That internal, mental vision of yourself must first appear in your own imagination. In your head, you must have a clear vision of a successful you in three to five years. A vision of what you want to look like near the end of your life must be developing in your mind right now. Unfortunately, most people only have a vague idea of this. If I ask, how can you succeed? You might say, I want to be rich. If I asked, how much would you like? You might reply, the more the better. Well, what about a house? Well, I want a nice, big house. Imagine going shopping for a house. Would you just say that you want a nice, big house to your realtor? Just like that? Do you think that kind of mindset will get you that kind of house? N never. What kind of car would you like to drive? Just a nice big car. A lot of people think this way. You hear it a lot, especially from people with no license. <laughs> Why is it that? They don't even know if they want a car, so they don't even bother getting a driver's license. If there's something that you really and truly want, you must be very precise in determining what it is. So I'm telling you, you must create a clear and vivid image of yourself as a successful person. Let me ask a question and be honest. Are you happy with your current lifestyle? Occasionally, I do see some happy people. I know most of you are not happy with where you are in life. Perhaps, uh, maybe you don't like yourself as a parent. Maybe you think that you weren't that great a child to your own parents. Very often, husbands realize they haven't been very nice to their wives. Wives don't always feel so proud of the way they treat their husbands. You don't like your current situation. You wish you could provide more for your kids. If so, you ought to come up with clear and detailed plans for a better future. I understand that preparing this is easier said than done. It's rather complicated. You know you want to be rich. You also want to be knowledgeable. 
You don't want to be rich and ignorant, do you? Think about it. Do you want to be rich but criticized by your peers? That can't be a successful life, can it? Believe me, it's a little complicated. There are many elements in success and happiness. Human beings are complex creatures, aren't we? So we need to learn about ourselves, human beings, first. Our bodies are made of flesh. There's a spirit in the being, too. Next, we have a soul. Lastly, we are surrounded by our environment. Therefore, we are put together from four parts. Each of these elements requires different things, meaning that they're fulfilled in different ways. Flesh is not completely what you are made of. It is a dwelling for the spirit and the soul. That's why most people don't call someone a great person just because they have a beautiful appearance. Why not? Only when the spirit and the soul inside that person are pure is that person considered wonderful. What exists inside the flesh matters more. We still need... Uh, we still need to satisfy our flesh, though. Flesh requires certain conditions. We must plan carefully to meet those requirements. Our flesh needs, most of all, safety. We need to take care of the most basic necessities of life. Food, clothing, and shelter. Next, uh, we have to take care of our health. Also, we want to live comfortably meaning no worries for the basic necessities of life. Our bodies require something physical, without which we feel our lives are in danger. Let's review. We have a desire to live healthily, comfortably, and long. I'm going to call that desire to live well. The next element we talked about is spirit. Most people mix up spirit and soul which I'm telling you, are both separate. For example, our conscience belongs to the spirit. Animals have a soul, but no spirit. So animals have no conscience. Imagine a dog biting a neighbor. Would that dog go home at night and feel sorry? Have you ever seen a dog like that? Dogs don't do that. On the other hand, we humans are capable of feeling remorse, even when we don't want to. That is one of the characteristics of humans. There is always a conscience within our spirit. The spirit has a desire for eternity. This is a sense of time. That's why even after the death of flesh, the spirit can go on. Hence, the spirit desires for an eternal life. I summarize this aspect as love. Next is our soul. Our soul wants us to know the unknown and to have peace of mind. Human emotions are included in this soul. With practice, we can control this element of ourselves. Joy, anger, sorrow, and pleasure all fall within this category. We have a desire to know the unknown and to learn new things. There are two types of environment, a natural and a social one. We share a desire to contribute to both our natural and social environments. The bottom line is that if we want an ideal and full life of success that we can be proud of, we must satisfy all four of these elements. Let me tell you what life is like when all of these are fulfilled. If you can live well, love, learn, and contribute in life, this is known as having a balanced life. A life that is not slanted or unbalanced. Many people live a slanted life, 
Some people work their whole lives for money, only to be labeled as cheap. It is very rare to see well-to-do people getting along well with their family members, isn't it? Of course, we want to be rich to live well. We want to be respected and loved as well. All these elements should be included in your life. Again, a concrete image of you as a successful person should be formed in your head. I'll tell you what it's like. Before a house is built, a perfect picture of the completed house is first formed inside the architect's head. Am I wrong? Every building that you see is a product of those unseen thoughts. Where should your successful life come from? It should come from your head. Again, if you don't create this vivid and detailed image of yourself, living a successful life in three to five years, you will still be living this current life of yours, which has, so far, left you so unfulfilled. Everyone, imagine a ship that departed a port, sailing without a destination. Where will it end up? It would sail aimlessly, only to be stranded and wrecked in the end. If you feel like you're stranded or wrecked, it's because you started your journey without a destination. You just let your ship wander wherever the wind blew you, only to end up stranded in the middle of nowhere. It's crucial that you leave the port with a destination in mind. Likewise, you must have a clear destination for three to five, even 10 years from now, already set in your thoughts. You must have that destination in your head right now. I admit, that it can be overwhelming. So I suggest making it like a movie. Picture yourself living in your dream house, driving your dream car, sending your children to elite schools, supporting your parents, and doing charity work for the needy. Imagine your future self as if you're directing a film. Make your film as vivid and clear as possible. We have a template that is called so-and-so's life scenario. All you have to do is fill in the blanks. The template looks like this. Each condition needed to live well should be used at least once. You might have a health in one of these. Living comfortably means having no worries for basic necessities. Most people have food or clothing, but not a house. These days, a car is one of our basic necessities. To fulfill our desire for love, uh, you might include uh, filial duties. And you might consider doing volunteering. For learn, you can have focus on your children or your education. We already have volunteering for our contribute in life. Then you should tally up the current you. Right here, right here, which is composed of 10 sections. For example, for your health, you are naturally healthy, so you might give yourself five out of 10 points. For your house, compare your current home to your ideal one and score yourself. Your ideal house is 2,700 square feet, and your current one is only 900 square feet. In that case, you give yourself two points. You drive a mid-sized sedan, so you give yourself two points. Yeah, so two points. You support your parents and your heart only, so maybe three points. You hardly do anything for charity, so one point. The children study well on their own, so five points. You never really travel anywhere. For cash, well, you're in debt. After that, connect all the dots. This is your current wheel of life, which is all crooked and doesn't roll well. Please connect all the dots. If all your points were to be at 10, like this, your wheel of life would become very round and would roll smoothly. Then your life would be a smooth and easy ride. Now you write down here, 
what you need to do in order to make each of these worth 10 points. Don't you really want a balanced life where you live in the house that you've always wanted? Drive a beautiful, fast car. Give your kids the best education. Take good care of your parents. Help those who are less fortunate and do charity work? Haven't you wanted to help those who have fallen on hard times? I felt so frustrated for not being able to help out those people as I couldn't do much because of my own struggles. Once you start making a lot of money, just watching it pile up isn't very much fun. It's more fun to give it away. It is more blessed to give than to receive. That's what it says in the Bible, and you'll understand once you do it. If you experience giving, you will realize it immediately. Giving requires some delicacy, however. Giving is an art. You need to pay attention to who you are giving to and when. You really need to help out the people closest to you first. Let's say you give away $5,000 to your siblings and $10,000 to your cousins. Well, what would happen if your siblings were to find out that they were only given $5,000 while more distant family got double that? They would feel shortchanged, wouldn't they? They are closer to you. You have to be careful when figuring out who to give to. Your wife or husband should be your number one priority. Your spouse is the most important. Husbands, stop making your wives worry about money. Husbands, say no to these three chores as of today. Cooking, cleaning, and doing laundry. There are a lot of husbands who won't. Hey, ladies, tell yourselves no to cooking, cleaning, and doing laundry from now on. That should be your goal. From now on, your focus should be on earning income, not on saving money. When we have income and expenses, people are so preoccupied with reducing their expenses that they go to extreme lengths to save money. People pinch pennies. Pinching pennies will never make you rich. Let's say a person makes $3,000 a month all his life. Will his frugality ever make him a millionaire? No way. He won't starve, but he will never be well-to-do. You should never let your spending be decided by your income. People control their spending based on their earnings. You have to stop doing that. Decide your expenses first. Think of what you'll be writing down in your life scenario. If you want to live like a decent human being, helping out the needy, you're going to need at least $20,000, probably as much as $30,000 every month. First, you need to set a target of spending $30,000 a month. Next, you have to find a way to make that kind of money. That is how you become rich. A decent living requires quite a large income. In order to live in a fancy house, drive your dream car, and give a good education to your kids, you're going to need a lot more than $3,000 to $7,000 a month. A minimum of thirty dollars to $50,000 is the answer. You need at least that much to be able to truly give. Helping out those less fortunate than you is helping in the truest sense of the word. I have yet to see someone who professes to help the poor after becoming rich actually do it. Rich people want to get richer. You ought to start helping out even when you're not so well off. Our company did just that. It was about five to six months after the company's launch when I got my first paycheck of $2,000 or so. Before then, I was wondering if I could donate $200 to a nearby school. I asked around to see if anyone was gracious enough to take that modest sum of money. One of the teachers at the school was very grateful to hear our offer. I was told that $200 was not so little. 
We started out modestly like that. As our situation improved, we gave more and more until we were giving out as much as hundreds of thousands in charity every year. So I'm saying you should all want to live a lifestyle in which you can help out the poor, win admiration, love each other, and make meaningful contributions to society. That's the image you should draw in your head. You might be wondering, all I have to do is imagine it? The simple answer is yes. I can prove it is true, scientifically. Your dream of living a $30,000 a month life can come true simply by dreaming of it. How is that possible? Our bodies are built like that. Our bodies can't really tell the difference between what is real and what is just happening in our minds. Many of you here are often probably too tired to get up in the morning. I can fix that immediately. Of course, taking Hemohim is very effective on its own, but here is something that works better than Hemohim. It works wonders on your body too. The thing that's even better than Hemohim is money. <laughs> Imagine $30,000 being deposited in your bank account every month. Would you feel groggy and tired in the morning? Or would you feel light and refreshed? <laughs> you would spring out of bed. Our bodies are hardwired to respond in a very specific way to a stimulus. Let's imagine that I put into your mouths a handful of sweet and tangy pomegranate seeds. Imagine yourself biting down on those delicious jewel-like seeds with their juice bursting into every nook and cranny of your mouth. What just happened inside your mouth? Raise your hand if you didn't salivate. Then you'd better go see a doctor. Our bodies respond to stimulus in the same way, regardless of whether we had a real experience or just an imagined one. Once you start imagining yourself making thirty to $50,000 a month, giving and sharing and believing in that vivid image of yourself, your body will start responding to it. You will never feel exhausted. Your voice will boom with confidence and your eyes will sparkle and you will behave differently. Once you start believing in yourself, making thirty to $50,000 a month with conviction, the power of your conviction will be obvious, even over the phone. You should be calling your friends like this. Hey guys, you really wanna come over here? What is it? I found something unbelievable. I can only explain if you rush here. I'm just so busy, and you really need to hear what I have to say. This is how you should conduct yourself. You can't afford to have a timid and weak attitude. I'm doing this for a friend's company, and I don't really have much to do with it. She just doesn't know many people, so I'm, I'm trying to help her out. It would be great if you might be willing to help. If you're this sheepish, then you are never going to succeed. I'm challenging you to change the way you think. Changing how you think will change your attitude, voice, eyes, and expressions. Where does a successful you start? It starts in your own mind. Atomy itself came from my own head. I am positive that we will eventually be making over $100 billion in revenue. I said that a crown master would be given $300,000. Lo and behold, that crazy story actually became a reality. Crown master really received $300,000 in cash. I promised when we first started the company that I would put all that cash into a big suitcase. As I said, that much cash weighs 30 kilograms. So a big suitcase was necessary. An Imperial Master will be given $1 million. Do you know how much $1 million weighs? I know exactly how much that amount would weigh. I counted $1,000 first, then multiplied it by 1,000, and it came to be about 100 kilograms. At that time, the company didn't even have an extra $1,000. I wasn't even being paid any salary. When I was calculating the weight of a million dollars, I was worried that it might be too heavy. 
and that we might need a forklift and a pallet to lift it. When did I start worrying about the forklift? It was during a time that I was driving a beat up old minivan and wasn't yet even being paid a salary. After me sprang out of my head, where should your successful self come from? From my head? No, it should come from yours. I sincerely hope that all of you here get to live successful lives, giving to loved ones and sharing with the needy. Don't forget to shoot a mental movie of yourself in three years or even 10 years as vividly as you possibly can. That's all for this lecture. Thank you for listening.